Hi, everyone, and thanks for tuning into today's session, Using School Data Sync to Give Time Back to Teachers and IT Admins. My name is Trent Clayton, and I'm a technology strategist in the education vertical at Microsoft Australia. Joining me today is Brad Walsh, Senior Project Officer at the Queensland Department of Education. Brad, thanks for taking the time to have a conversation today. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks, Trent, me as well. So, Brad, before we dive into what SDS is and how you've been able to leverage it at the Queensland Department of Education, could you please tell us a bit about your role at the department? Yeah, of course. Uh, hello, all. So, my name is Brad Walsh. I am a Senior Project Officer uh, with the Queensland Department of Education. Uh, I administer the Microsoft 365 tenancy that the department leverages to provide messaging and collaboration services to all our Queensland State School uh, staff and students. Uh, and I guess my primary responsibility outside of administering that tenant is looking after the evergreen space. So ensuring that we follow the, the relevant evergreen change management strategies here on our end. Excellent. Thanks, Brad. So before we kick off, I'd like to provide a high level overview of School Data Sync, also referred to as SDS. School Data Sync is a free web application offered in every Microsoft 365 tenant that ingests data elements from external student information systems, either using CSV files or via a direct API connection. Once ingested, SDS uses this data for creating users, Microsoft 365 groups and class teams, saving teachers time and empowering students and educators to easily adopt and use M365 apps and services. SDS creates groups for IT and keeps them dynamically updated over time to simplify IT management and group-based administration. These groups can be used for identity management, group-based licensing, Intune device management, scope delegation administration, and a variety of Microsoft 365 app settings and policy configurations. Finally, SDS synchronizes data to enrich education insights. This additional data allows Education Insights Premium to provide a robust set of reports and analytics with M365 activity data, further enriched with the education contextual data commonly stored in the student information system. So Brad, how did you first come across SDS and what was the use case that you were trying to solve? Mm, uh, so a bit of background there, Trent. So we follow an evergreen change strategy here where we allow most of our changes to available workloads to flow through to end users automatically. Uh, the exception to that is our high impact changes that will require additional change management prior to release, for example, the deployment of new workloads or services. Um, and it's probably worth noting for everybody listening that, that when the department initially moved to Microsoft 365, uh, a number of years ago, the only workload we leveraged was Exchange Online. That was the driver behind the move um, to Microsoft 365. And then over the years, we've progressively rolled out access to the other the other workloads, so applications like SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. So specific to to School Data Sync, uh, our first engagement with Microsoft around around the product occurred uh, in early 2018. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to have the product group themselves uh, actually here in country. Uh, and so they took the opportunity and we took the opportunity to, to, to sit down with them and, and work through and try and understand what school data sync uh, could offer to an organisation like us um, in terms of Microsoft Teams uh, deployment. Um, and at that point in time, you know, the department here, we, we were already uh, collecting some high level requirements around uh, Microsoft Teams and, and how we might look to deploy that. Uh, and that was in direct response to uh, end user demand from schools. So we had a, a number of teaching staff, a number of schools who were very interested uh, in Microsoft Teams as a product. Uh, and we'd already started collecting, I guess, those requirements throughout 2019, stemming from that original meeting in 2018. Um, when, like a lot of organisational institutions, I guess, you know, we're already storing all our student data in a student information system. And so when we found out that, that school data sync was available, it made sense to us uh, to leverage that tool um, to simplify bulk class team creation and management. So we were, we were only a couple of months into a pilot of class teams uh, created using school data sync. Uh, when COVID struck in early 2020, uh, and we were placed in a position where we had to had to look to a model where we could roll out class teams much much faster. So, with that, did you come across any challenges, and if so, um, uh, how were they resolved? 
Yeah, so a number of a number of challenges there, Trent. So as much as possible, the department's approach here uh, is to provide our Queensland state schools with choice in terms of the applications and services that, are, that we make available to them. Uh, so when the team's deployment model was being architected in response to COVID, we determined that we'd be running an opt-in uh, model. Uh, so what that meant for us in terms of, you know, the challenge, there's a, a layer of complexity that gets introduced there where you have some users who you want to have access to the product and some users who you don't. So what that meant is uh, a number of pieces of work we had to do on our end. We had to filter out the data that we were going to have uh, ingested by school data sync for our class team creates. Uh, and then we also had to work uh, to control access for all those schools who chose not to opt in. So controlling access we achieved um, primarily through the use of a number of Microsoft products. The, the key piece there being conditional access policies in Azure Active Directory, just using those to block access to teams for, for schools that hadn't opted in. Uh, we also encountered um, a number of challenges stemming from the, the sheer size uh, of our tenant and, and the number of teams that school data sync would be required to create. So we run a single tenant model here for all Queensland state schools. Uh, so you're talking about around about 1,250 uh, state schools. And across those, there's more than 400, uh, 550,000 students and another 100,000 staff on top of that. So all those identities exist in a single tenant. That tenant is centrally managed. Uh, and when you start looking at rolling out, um, you know, class teams, we had about 800 schools that opted in initially. And when you start looking at the number of teams, we were in, you know, 100, 150,000 creates that were acquired. So there were a number of challenges just around the sheer volume, uh, a number of challenges around the timelines associated with that. So aligning your class team creates via school data sync uh, to make sure that they were using the most current data out of your student information system, try and reduce the amount of processing you have to do because the scale is already huge. You want it to be as efficient uh, as possible. And then simple things like estimating timeframes for completion so you can keep the executive and your end users in the loop in terms of when it will be done. Uh, we also encountered some, some issues around things like um, object limits uh, in Azure AD, and, and those limits were just being hit by virtue of the sheer number of objects that were being created during provisioning. So we worked very closely with the Microsoft Teams here in Australia uh, and the product group for School Data Sync itself uh, based over in the United States. So we, we worked with them regularly to, to sit down and have a look to make sure that our back-end processing was occurring as efficiently as it could be. Uh, and to make sure that that Microsoft um, were monitoring and, and assisting us with uh, with things like your object limit scaling to ensure that we could continue provisioning. Uh, and probably the last major challenge that we've encountered, you know, once we got through uh, provisioning and we moved into actually using those class teams created by, by School Data Sync was around teams life cycling. Uh, so it's such a large number of team creates. We were we were obviously very conscious of uh, avoiding hitting any of the tenant and service limits associated with Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365 groups. So to in order to ensure, I guess, that we stayed under those limits, we spent some time with Microsoft uh, architecting a, a life cycling solution uh, using out of the box tools. So we we worked on a solution that uses the uh, group cleanup tools built into School Data Sync itself. Uh, and then we combine that as well with um, your Azure uh, Active Directory group expiration policies. So that that life cycling approach has really uh, helped us to ensure that, you know, we're not hitting any limits. We're not um, uh, having any issues with scaling and certainly our tenant is performing optimally. Brilliant. It has been quite the journey, that's for sure. Um, so out of, out of all that, what's been the biggest benefit to, to end users within the schools that you've seen, Brad? Yeah, so look, um, the obvious benefit there for school data sync uh, and directly related to a provisioning class teams is that benefit to school. So to your end users, your teachers and students. So uh, in, in having access to Microsoft Teams, they've got access to, to, you know, a modern, powerful application that combines your chat and your video and your calling and your collaboration. It's all in a single experience for those end users. Um, and from their perspective, the benefits that are accruing, uh, I guess, directly related to school data sync, it's related to the management uh, and creation of teams themselves. So as a teacher, you, you don't have to walk in on, on day one at start of school or start of term or start of semester 
and spend time that should be spent teaching on things like creating class teams and, and adding students to those teams and managing memberships. So from the perspective of a teacher, you, you simply walk in and, and in the background that work has all been done for you with your school data sync to synchronize uh, our student information system data to create the teams you need to add the students that need to be in there and you can just come in and teach. Yeah, that's fantastic. And with the, the dynamic nature of it, for example, if a um, student moves from one class to another, that automatically updates that class team as well so that the teacher can just go on teaching and the classes are automatically updated. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Trent. So that direct uh, API connection that you effectively can uh, almost set and forget that and it will just seamlessly update those memberships in the background. That's perfect. Um, what do you foresee as next steps for you, Brad, and and the team with the with the product coming in for uh, for next year's return to school, for example? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good question, Trent. So for for twenty twenty in response to COVID, and and we followed this same approach through into twenty twenty one. We we've retained quite a, a hands on manual approach um, to the use of school data sync. So. I think now as a department, we're comfortable that we've we've reached a level of maturity and indeed our confidence in the product, School Data Sync as a product now is you know sky high. And I think we'll be working with um, Microsoft going forward to pursue uh, full automation, as much automation as we can get out of this. The volume of it means that uh, trying to manage it manually going forward is going to be quite problematic and time consuming. And given that Microsoft already provides uh, uh, essentially all the tools you need to fully automate the creation of these class teams using a combination of school data sync um, and Microsoft Flow, uh, it makes a lot of sense to us to remove the, the human element from school data sync. So to, to take people out of the equation to reduce the risk of us um, misconfiguring or, or perhaps putting in uh, questionable data. So automation is certainly where we'll be going um, and we're doing some work on our end, uh, you know, to, to make that process as simple as we can. Uh, hopefully, heading into 2022, we'll be in a position where that will be return to school, the, the first return to school where it is fully automated. Brilliant. Last question, Brad. What advice do you have for other education jurisdictions looking to implement SDS but haven't started on that journey yet? What are your key tips to a successful SDS implementation? Yeah, so there's probably um, three pieces of advice, I guess, hard, hard one learnings on our part. Um, that we would provide to, to educational institutions who are who are starting on their journey with school data sync. Um, the first would certainly be uh, garbage in, garbage out, you know. So take the time to sit down with the teams that manage uh, and support your student information systems, especially if, like us, you're running a bespoke solution or, or a hem heavily customised, you know, commercial off-the-shelf solution. Um, sit down and spend some time understanding the data that you're going to need to extract and feed into School Data Sync. Uh, so a comprehensive understanding of that data, it'll mean that, you know, the results that you see will align to, to what you're expecting and certainly if anything goes awry, uh, troubleshooting will be, be much easier if you understand what has actually gone into school data sync. You'll be able to work to understand what it's actually done with what you've given it. Um, secondly, I know we touched on this earlier, uh, definitely plan for lifecycle management, especially uh, if you intend to allow end user team creation in addition to using school data sync to, to create your class teams. So teams pro proliferation, um, you know, it, it can and will have an impact on your organisation in the context of both end user support, but you do want to make sure you keep an eye on, uh, you know, the overall health of your tenant, make sure that you don't end up with users creating thousands upon thousands of teams uh, and, you know, resulting in perhaps your tenant hitting some of those technical or service limits. And last but not least, um, if your end users have never used Teams at all, or, or perhaps if they've just never used the class team template, Invest as much as you can in creating end user knowledge. Um, so for some of your, your teaching staff who, who've never seen teams at all or a class team perhaps, uh, having access to that product will be transformative um, in respect to, to education and learning and teaching in a classroom environment. So don't underestimate uh, how much training and support those end users will seek from you, especially around some of the uh, education specific functionality that exists in teams like uh, assignments, for example. So yeah, take some time to sit down and, and create as much end user knowledge as you can and it will save you a lot of time and support in the long run. Awesome. 
Thanks so much, Brad. I'm sure this has been beneficial to everyone watching and has hopefully provided some more insights around what's possible with School Data Sync. For more information, you can go to the following URL, aka.ms forward slash School Data Sync. Thanks for listening and have a great edge of tech. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, everyone.